As always guys, don't forget to check the video description down below. It's basically a store. It has some important stuff for today. Because today we're going to be just talking about why the Radiator fan is not coming on for this Honda Civic. In the description below, there's a link for a school that I'm partnered with. If you know how the system works on a car, you can figure it out. And there's also repair manuals with wiring diagrams. You're going to need a wiring diagram for today. You could just try and Google one. Um, but if you get a repair manual diagram, it'll make things a lot easier. I'm still going to show you um, what areas and all that, all the things you need to know for this specific car. But anyways, with all that said, let's go ahead and check it out. Also, if this video is helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. And let's check this thing out. So here is our radiator fan. It is not cutting on when it's supposed to. So how do you know what it is okay first thing we're gonna start with you're gonna need a power probe there's a link in the video description below for a power probe it looks like this it's got alligator clips it's just gonna plug onto your battery well not plug but just like hook up to with the alligator clips and then you'll see it's on up is positive down is negative and you're gonna find the connector for this radiator fan which is gonna be this guy right here now uh, black red is going to be the power side so what you do is you'll take your power probe when you hit the top button that's going to send it power it'll also when you connect into a wire it's going to tell you if it has power or negative right now we see it as negative we hit it we can see the fan comes on what does that tell us well we know the motor is good next thing we're going to do is we're going to go find the relay go to the relay now your relay he is sitting, it's gonna be this guy right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take him out. And the more orange, if that's even orange, I don't know what color that is, but metal and kind of colored looking one, that's gonna be your high power side. It's not like high, high power, but that's where all your current's gonna be. This is just a control side of the relay. So we come all the way to the relay, we unplug the relay, and we look at the power side, the high power side. So we can see we got power there, we got negative there. So we know how this relay works is when it's commanded on, it sends a small control current across here, which then magnetizes the relay, closes the circuit, and it makes this power, this power, it sends the power here. And would you look at that? Our fan cuts on and cuts off. Now, what did we just do there? We figured out that the wiring from here all the way to the fan is good. So if that's good, well, it, what could it be? The next thing we need to look at is what is controlling this? What's telling it to come on? So if you have a wiring diagram, you can see the engine coolant temperature sensor is what is the engine coolant temperature switch is what is responsible for giving this thing signal. And I'll show you that here in a second. But what we're going to look at next is we got power here and nothing here why do we have nothing because when that coolant temperature switch gets hot enough what it does is it makes a connection and gives us a ground right now there is no ground so if i probe that wire and gave it a negative what it would do is complete the circuit energize the relay and cut your fan on if the relay is working so the way to test the relay, <laughs> there's a lot of testing going on here, but I'm just showing you it all. So I have a video showing you how to check any relay, Fixbook check relay. If you just do that search, you'll find the video and I'll lay it all out for you, but I'm gonna tell you how to do it real quick. Um, you take a power probe. There's also a little negative alligator clip just coming right off the probe. You're gonna hook the negative alligator clip to one of the control sides and then the other side you're gonna hit power and you're gonna tap it and it's gonna click of course while that is in place you're gonna take a digital voltmeter and you're gonna switch it to ohms there's a link below in the video description for one of these also it's an auto ranging multimeter it's what you want switch it to ohms you're checking resistance you're gonna check resistance on the two more colored um, pins right here you want very low resistance like zero resistance or 0 0.1 ohms you don't want like hardly any resistance if it's like got 90 100 200 ohms there's a problem inside this relay with that circuit 
Okay, so let's say your relay test kit. Now you know how to check that. Next thing we're gonna do is check for the signal. So what I did today for this car is I went ahead, turned it on, got it hot because the customer complaint is um, at the stoplight, it overheats, but as soon as you get going, it works. A lot of time that that is a cooling fan. So that's why I'm checking the whole cooling fan system. So I got the car hot, I got it to overheat. And then I came, after checking all this stuff, I came over here and what I did is I put my thing in there and I looked for a signal for this thing to turn green, for it to ground. And actually, to be honest, when I did all this and I unplugged, because I unplugged the coolant temperature sensor, which is going to be this guy right over here. I'll touch it just so you can see. This is your engine coolant temperature sensor for this car. Okay, when I unplugged that and I undid the relay, put everything back together, it did start working again. When I got here, it was not working. Now it does work. That's a problem when you're trying to figure out what's going on with it because if it's not broken at the time, you can't figure out exactly what's wrong with it. So what we could have done is get to replace the relay and the engine coolant temperature sensor. That would fix the problem. So let's just pretend it was a bad engine coolant temperature sensor. So And we're on this last step of checking everything. So what we do is, like I said, we're going to come here. We're going to get the car hot and... To where it should not be that hot which is going to be just a little over halfway it should never really go over halfway now if we do not have a ground if it doesn't do this right here then we know that engine coolant temperature switch is bad if you do get a ground and you can sit here and get power and your fan comes on you know that relay is bad so it's either one or the other this is like an older car uh, or it could be the wiring also um and how would you check the wiring but in my situation it come down to either the relay or the switch now how would you check the wiring well let me just give you one one option here okay let's say you you give it power from here okay and it does not cut on over here but you probe it right over at the beginning like right at the connector and it does work okay well how do I check the wire what you do is you take your digital multimeter you're gonna put it doesn't really matter which side but um, you can set it to resistance again and you can stick um, you can stick one in there and then come all the way over here where you probed it and go ahead and stick the other lead in there you need like zero really zero resistance i mean your tool could be off just a little bit 0 0.1 or something but it needs to free flow if you got like say i don't know one ohm or three ohms or something crazy like that then you know hey there's something in this wire that's gonna make it's gonna cause a load on the wire it's gonna take volts away from the fan motor so it's gonna be a problem or you may have it may say ol over limit and that would mean there's no connection see right there it says ol and then when you connect your two leads it says ol and you connect your two leads and ta-da zero resistance so or 0 0.2 um it should be zero resistance right there so that's how you can check all your wires you just go from one side of the wire to the other side of the wire and that is pretty much it that's how you would find out um why it isn't cutting on it the procedure for most cars is actually going to be pretty similar um just finding where the relay's at and all that stuff um is going to make a big difference but hey i did want to add something real quick um a two common problems for if it is wiring this is going to be easy wiring solution is you could have a bad ground you, I mean, you can go with your wiring diagrams and stuff. You can go chase down the thing and, and find out exactly where the ground is. You can find out exactly where the break in the wire is. But the easy way to do this is, let's say we didn't have, it was over the limit from here to there, right? You're also going to want to check your fuses and stuff too. Fuses don't usually break or they don't usually pop unless something else breaks. You have some other sort of issue or a critter gets in or shoes on a wire, does something weird. But you do want to check your fuses. And I, you know, I just realized I didn't check, I'll tell you about that. I believe, I mean, don't quote me on this, I could be wrong. Is these two right here, one's your um, AC 
I think the 20 is your AC and that 15 is gonna be the radiator fan but just do a quick Google check on that to make sure um, and with the power probe what you do is you turn everything in the on position and then you make sure both sides have positive if one has positive and one has nothing then you know hey that fuse is not connected anyways the fix for if you have a break in one of these wires you test the resistance and you got over the limit okay what you could do you could just cut this this one's been cut before you just cut this wire run a wire all the way up here and stick it on this side the okay so the front one is gonna wait for the control the back one has power all the time so obviously you're not going to put it on that back one, you're going to put it on this left front one. You just stick a wire in there that's the same size wire as what you got. You don't want to go smaller because you're going to cause problems. And then you can, you could actually cut, cut this piece out and bend that terminal um, and then just kind of figure out a way, hook your wire up into a connector that would slide onto that and then you could just plug this back in. Um, and that would be a solution for if there's a break in the wire from here to there. Now, same kind of thing with the negative. If you're not getting a ground, you could just snip this right here and then, or snip it down as far as you can, get as much wire as you can, and then just make your own ground. Just ground it like right here or something. So, any kind of wiring issue, you can always just insert your wire. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than. You know trying to do the whole wiring harness and trying to figure out exactly where it's broken and all that sort of thing um that's all they're going to do anyways at the dealerships be like oh well you need a new wiring harness that's going to be 900 dollars." <laughs> so anyways it sounds like i don't i don't want to use that word okay it sounds like it's just not done professionally but that is going to be a cheap and kind of best way to do it anyways again that's it thanks for watching if this video helped you Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for doing that. See you next time.